Hello everyone, Proxima Dust here with another hopefully pretty quick tutorial, this time for my newest uh, apartment preset, Corporal Plaza Conapt. I know a few people have reached out, they've had a few problems getting this particular one installed. It has some new requirements, so I just wanted to quickly go over those. Um, it's not going to be a very polished video, but hopefully I can give some insight to people who are experiencing some challenges and also quickly show off a few things. So if you want to install this new preset, it's pretty straightforward. Just come to the files page, um, you know, do download. I can't vouch for Vortex. I've had issues with it in the past. I don't use it. Um, in Cyberpunk manual is pretty easy. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, it's still uh, always good to go to requirements first and just take a look at what's required for this mod. So there are a lot of dependencies now for Conapt compared to my previous ones. So obviously you need appearance menu mod installed and working ideally up to date. I haven't tried Conapt with the new version of AMM that just got released, but it should work. If you see otherwise, let me know. Um, two new requirements for this one are Archive Excel and uh, Codeware. So Codeware is actually a fairly recent new requirement. It's now needed for AMM, um, but you also now need Archive Excel for Conapt because I'm using a new approach that allows me to remove pre-existing props from the world space. So if you don't have Archive Excel, my Excel file won't work. Things can go wrong, like crashes and such, but at the very least, you're probably going to see a whole lot of props that shouldn't be there. Um, otherwise, CET, I'm not sure is a hard requirement. It may be needed for AMM, um, but that's pretty much it. So the, the main new one really is Archive Excel. So if you're trying to get Conapt working, make sure you grab this. Uh, after you've installed and made sure that you've kind of updated uh, all the dependencies, just come over here. So manual download, I just download it. It's pretty straightforward, slow download. Should take two seconds. And then you're basically just gonna open it up. So unzip, WinRAR, whatever you're using. And you've got two folders here. So archive and bin, and I just copy them. And then I'm going to go, I'm using Steam, so I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to Manage, Browse Local Files over Cyberpunk, and this is going to just immediately open up the installation folder. And once you're in here, you can see Cyberpunk 2077, so you know you're in the right place. You basically just paste it. So I won't bother going through with it because I've already got all the files you can see, but for you, it should just, everything should dump in and there probably won't be any overwriting unless you've installed some of my other apartment presets and then you might get a prompt. Um, so just do, do a quick double check. I'm gonna go into the archive PC mod folder and I'm gonna scroll down and I'm really just looking for a couple of files here. So I'm looking for Proxima's prop shop version four dot archive and Proxima's Phantom Liberty Prop Shop V1 archives. So these two archives are basically unlocking a bunch of props that I use. Um, they're not entirely necessary for the build, but if you wanna see all the props and not have weird blank spots, then you need these two archives. The other thing that you wanna see in this folder is the, oh God, what did I call it? The Corpo Plaza Conapt prop remover .excel file. So you're really looking for .excel. You probably don't have a lot of those and just look for the prop remover one. Uh, once again, if you don't have this, you're gonna have a bunch of props uh, from the vanilla game that will still be in place and will be clipping with all sorts of stuff. So it'll be terrible. So those are the three files that you should see in your mod folder. So you can see the path here. Those are looking good. Next, you should go into bin, x64, plugins, Cyber Engine Tweaks, Mods, Appearance Menu Mod, and then you want to jump into Collabs and Custom Props. So I've got a lot of Lua's here because I was doing a commission that used a lot of other people's stuff. You probably won't have so many files. What you're really looking for, um, similar to the archives, are the Proxima's Prop Shop V4 Lua and the Proxima's Prop Shop uh, V1 Lua. Now, you might ask, instead of the V4 of Lua, you might have the V4 clean or both. I'm using both at the same time and it causes no problems for me. So it should be fine, but you could basically, I think, delete either one. Uh, if that causes any issues though, just get them both back in. If you don't have the normal one, the non-clean version of V4 here, um, you can get it from any of my other uh, presets. So if you go to preview file contents, you can see the Lua right here. So you can just download it from here 
if you want. Um, so basically those two Lua's are all you should see in here unless again you have like some of your own installed. And then we're going to go back a couple of steps uh, to the just appearance menu mod folder and we're going to open user. And we're going to go into decor. And this is where you should be seeing the JSON files. So these are the actual preset apartment data files uh, where it stores everything based on how I've built the apartment. And so for CyberNoir ConApt, you should actually see four files inside of this folder. So the basic ConApt and then three variants that I created that have different levels of detail. So straight edge, um, which gets rid of a lot of like all the booze and all the drugs and I think the weapons and stuff as well. Scumpunk, which is the highest detail and it has a lot of extra kind of blood and drugs and booze and shattered glass and fun stuff. And then media, which is like the light version. So it's the smallest one. So people who are maybe having uh, problems, if you have HDD or like, uh, you know, older systems, you may want to try media first just to see if that gives any issues. Scumpunk is the one that's most likely to give issues because it's basically like 30% more props than media. So those four JSON files should be in here. Um, and so if you've got all those files in those right places, everything should be working well. I'm just going to jump in the game and you can see I've got it loaded currently. It's working fine for me. No real problems. So hopefully this is what you're seeing. Uh, one other thing I wanted to kind of mention now that I'm making this quick video, might as well do it anyway, um, is how to customize this build. So this was something um, I wanted to talk about a while ago. Basically when I made this, as I mentioned, I used a new prop pack called Prop Paradise and I unlocked a whole bunch of items from the game when I created that prop pack uh, with Manafort Dex's help. And a lot of these items are customizable. So they've got like basically multiple appearances. So a lot of stuff you see, I would hesitate to say, but almost everything uh, that is a media screen or kind of like neonish likely has an alternate appearance. Um, so an easy one I'm gonna go with is this this bar counter right here. So if you want to customize, what you would do is go into decor. So you want to find the prop first, go to save props. And I think counter should just bring this up. So there it is. So PRX bar counter 3C. So I'm obviously not going to be able to sit here and tell you every single prop name. It should be pretty intuitive. Like this is a bar counter. Its name is bar counter. So likely you can figure it out. Um, but I've demonstrated before, one approach is to sh click show nearby only. So it's only showing props that are within three meters or whatever this indicates. Uh, and then you can just tune it up a little bit if you're not seeing anything right away. Or you could close and kind of get closer. Uh, if it's not bringing anything up, if you click into the text field and then hit space, that kind of like refreshes it. Sometimes that needs to be done. It's a little weird. but um, So I could target this. And I can see basically this arrow is indicating around where the prop is. I can use the hide function and there we go. So I can see that two counters were actually used here. So now that I've got it selected, this is going to get a little bit tricky and I apologize for this, but there's not much I can do about it. What you want to do when you have it selected is go to the target tools. So you just saw I came over here and clicked uh, open target tools and make sure that it's highlighted and then save. So this is just saving the properties of the object. So its size, its location in the world. And that's because when you're changing some of these, they might go weird. They might get like wonky and you basically may need to like replace the props. So I'm just showing you as like a backup. Um, but hopefully it won't need that. And basically go over to scan. So again, make sure you've got the item selected, go to scan. And this is just a list of all the options for the reskins. Uh, make sure that you scroll down. This is not the only list. So a lot of the options have like 20, 30, um, you know, our props have 20, 30 different options. And so if I click cyan, I guess it's the default. So there's Japan purple. Now I've got a purple one. So if I go to decor and click update, took a few seconds because it's a pretty heavy build. Uh, there's a lot of props, so you might experience that too, but it seems to have taken. There was no crash. The prop didn't go weird, like oversize or anything like that. So it should be fine. So I'm now I'm going to clear saved because I don't need those properties anymore. And then I'm going to hide and I'm going to say, okay, so that reveals that's obviously this one. Target it, save the properties just in case, go to scan, set to purple as well. Go back to decor. 
and update. Freezes for a second, but takes the change. And there you go, I've now got a pink bar. So you could do it with this bar, you could do it with this light up here, not the one that's traveling around, I didn't place that, that's default, but this one that's right above the bar has a whole bunch of color options as well. Um, you could do it with the stage base here. This one's a little tricky because it's actually called oops, uh, bar table. So PRX bar table showing near, hide does nothing, so it's not that one, but hide on the second option makes it disappear. So here's another one. We're going to save properties again just in case it gets screwy. And so this one got screwy. So this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes they just get weird. So what you can do is just hit restore and it's going to basically put it back in place with the appropriate size. So every time I test a new one, I have to hit restore, unfortunately, but you know, it is a way that you can customize this. So that's kind of neat. This piece here, this glow in the middle, um, quite similarly is also a bar table. So this is just me playing around, doing kind of the cobble thing, making use of things, how they are not intended to be used. So save the properties, so I can drag it up. You can see what it actually looks like. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, have some nice light in the center. So that's the kind of fun you can have. Um, so I could have this one changed as well. So you can see this one's also messing around. Um, so restore properties, and it's back in place. So you can see already it's it's a pretty substantial change to the the color vibe of the place. Um, just quickly looking around. So this blue lantern thing there, I think, can be color changed. You could just run a search for lantern. Uh, the glow sticks can be color changed. This this table, this actual table, of course, can be color changed. Same with this one over here. I think this lantern can be changed. Not a huge color option, but um, this chair, the base neon, uh, it actually changes, I think, the background of the chair as well, like the um, whatever that is, like plastic or metal backing piece. Uh, the case, a lot of these cases that are over here as well can be color shifted. These couches can be color shifted white. I think these ones are actually called sofa. There it is. Target, clear saved. Save the properties. Yeah, and there's a cream version. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, so I mentioned media screens. So these can be a little bit tricky as well. So I'll just go screen. And this is one where you definitely want to use the uh, the detect near because I have a lot of screens in this build. So here's another weird thing that happens sometimes. So you see the prop that I just clicked hide on? It actually disappeared from the list. So sometimes when you hide an object, it actually gets like transported to another area of the world. I think that's that's how AMM hides it. Is maybe it just like sinks it super deep in the earth or something, um, and that can basically remove it when you've got show nearby only. And so it's a little annoying, but when that happens, you just have to unclick it, uh, click back in the field, and then do the spacebar thing to refresh it. And you're basically just looking for something that's hidden. So I guess I, I accidentally did the cell phone screen. That's not what I was looking for, but you can see it's it's hidden because it currently sets the option for unhide. So this is the object I just mistakenly got rid of. So if I just click the unhide button, it would become visible again. So kind of problem solved. Uh, hopefully with the actual screens, it won't do that. So I'm not looking for a cell phone. I'm not looking for monitor screen EB. I'm looking for PRX monitors. So all these kind of new monitors I've added in, they should all be fronted with PRX dash whatever. So this is probably it here. I could see the uh, the line appears to indicate where its location is. So I'm sure this is the one. I'm going to clear the save properties. I'm going to save the properties to back it up again. Go to scan. There's a lot of options for this one as well. So same thing, it's screwing up. So I have to restore to bring it back into place. So there's another completely alternate screen. Still looks good. Um, but very different vibe, you know, like bringing that yellow in, you can see the yellow reflection spreading throughout the room, it picks up nicely off of that second yellow screen over there. Uh, I rather like it. It might even be a bit of an improvement on the blue because there's a lot of blue going on in the build, but so you saw there was tons of options. So you can just play around with that. And then remember, once you've changed it, go back to decor, make sure you're in saved props, uh, make sure the thing that you're changing is still highlighted. So maybe because I walked away, so I'm not in close proximity anymore. 
There you go. So I can see the yellow. It might be different for you. You might not see yellow. I think it maybe is blue or something default highlight because I'm using like a custom UI. But um, but I can see this is the one I just changed. So then I would click update. And then it should be fine whenever I reload the game. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of stuff. This brain dance machine has a recolor to all these media screens. This sword could be turned into a normal sword if you want. So katana. Um, I want the actual katana PRX. Remember, all the customizable stuff pretty much is going to be fronted by PRX. So uh, once again, we're going to save the properties in case something goes wrong. Uh, this is, oops, I got the katana stand for some reason. Turn that thing off. Uh, so save the properties, go to scan, and yeah, so if I go to default, it's just a normal katana. You could go that one, hollow, basically, this is like red with like a little bit of a blue nimbus around it. Um, I think this little hollow guy here can be recolored as well. So there's just lots of stuff. Uh, this media screen can obviously be changed. The glow sticks down there. The shisha lamp can be color shifted as well. These can be color, sh well, not color shifted. You could turn the emissive white off, I think, if you could find them. I think it's just called like a shelf or something like that. And not so much in here. These screens, the top three up there can be shifted if you want. I think that covers it. I guess there's not like a ton of stuff, but enough, you know, the uh, the two blue lanterns in the corners. Uh, I think this yellow light down there maybe can be shifted. I think that's actually a, a lantern, a different one that's been like repurposed. So try to find that, this media screen. Anyway, if I continue to uh, make a lot more builds, you're going to see a lot more use of these PRX props. I might also unlock some new ones. So you're probably going to see more opportunity uh, in the future to be basically customizing the texture and colors of elements of builds I do. Uh, so that's pretty much it. hope you enjoyed and uh, have fun building. Let me know if you have any issues uh, getting these mods working.